is my pleasure. It's a Oksana received a bachelor degree in art history in 2009 with a bachelor of arts in history Then she chose her career to follow the master program that is at the school of buildings between art history and philosophy and culture. And finally, in 2015, completed PhD studies with a paper that emphasized the possibilities of using cultural history as a way of better understanding learning art. So this is a very complicated itinerary yeah. for coming to the truth. So the, the topic of Oksana for today is history and memory, the perception of time, and in 19th century Romanian historical painting. Hello, really, really glad that you stayed up until now because I know you do the last panel and people tend to walk away, go home, they're tired after a very long day. So, uh, this is not my first stint uh, regarding uh, Romanian historical painting and the perception of time because two years ago I uh, attended uh, the annual conference of the International Society for Cultural History and I gave a presentation that uh, emphasized the coexistence of uh, various time frames in Romanian historical painting during the 19th century. Uh, based, in the, based on the paintings that I analyzed in my presentation, I discovered that uh, there are two major time frames present in the Romanian historical painting. The present and, of course, the past. Those coexisted very peacefully uh, and uh, one might say that uh, uh, the present events were depicted in a similar, in a, in a similar ma manner, very sorry, quite tired, as the past one. Similar compositions, uh, similar colors, uh, similar uh, positions. Thereby uh, transforming the present into an important part participant in the big, big historical framework. Um, of course, this uh, phenomenon is not limited to Romanian, Romanian historical painting. Uh, not only to the Balkans, we can uh, observe similar uh, occurrences in, in Western art, of course. Well, with today's paper, I intend to go beyond uh, this process of uh, merely identifying these time frames and uh, uh, try to understand why this particular uh, choice and why the present is tasked with so much meaning as the past. And this is where uh, cultural memory studies uh, come into play by revealing the process of selective and subjective memory. Uh, whether it's collective or individual. Uh, of course, uh, when we speak about cultural memory or social cultural memory, we always tend to reference uh, Maurice Alvac's uh, study on collective memories. He states that we always remember uh, whenever we are in a group, group of friends, uh, with our family, in a community. Uh, that means that our memories are socially and culturally uh, uh, constructed and determined. So, um, the existence of a collective memory and social frameworks of memory is based upon the very cohesion of a group. Well, we only remember uh, we only remember in social environment by combining our memories with the ones from, uh, from the group. So, uh, Osbach uh, continues, 
by stating that uh, we preserve memories in each epoch of our lives and these are continually reproduced. So this is where art and particularly uh, historical painting comes into play by perpetuating various uh, instances of the past following conventions of representation. These conventions of uh, representation are borrowed from uh, Peter Berg's uh, uh, theory. He states that each uh, epoch, each age, uh, has its own cultural, culturally constructed conventions of representation. Whenever we see an image, we can only fully understand it if we can uh, understand the complex uh, social and cultural environment that produced it. So, uh, when, uh, what we see in a painting, it's not a piece of history, but uh, becomes a piece of history because it entails a certain type of narrative about the past whenever we speak uh, about historical painting. In this sense, art acts similar to the process of the creation of new institutions in a society. By building upon the old, it can justify the creation of something new. In addition, I think that this is one of the reasons why present events are depicted using, using structural composition akin to instances from the past. Using the past, the present borrows the same principles and the same values as the, as the past. Uh, regarding the representation of the past, I think that Romanian artists are act as individuals who participate in two types of memory. The one, uh, their own individual memory, which exists within the collective framework of memory. And so, uh, whenever the uh, a Romanian artist or an artist chooses to depict uh, a past event, uh, he doesn't only take that past event, extracts it and just puts it on canvas. He adds his own personal interpre interpretation of that specific event. Uh, regarding the, uh, the situation when uh, present events are depicted as historical or past events, the artist assumes the role of a memory maker by imposing on the collective his own vision. So, uh, regarding the deep and uh, apparent connections between history and memory, Altbach's statements that collective memory and history are two constructed concepts seems to lack the same value in today's society because during his time the concept of history, uh, recent, recent history and recent events did not, uh, uh, wasn't even invented so or history wasn't even in the same picture. Uh, when talking about Romanian historical painting or historical painting in general, I think that the main task undertaken by those artists are to reconcile, to give a balance, to find a balance uh, between uh, given and construction, constructed, between tradition and contract, between history and willpower between him, inherited identity and uh, invented unity. Uh, this, is a, this is a citation that belongs to Jean-Jacques Villain Bouget. Uh, he builds upon uh, Benedict uh, Anderson definition of uh, the nation as an imagined community. So uh, historical painting uh, comes into play to create uh, present values by building upon the old. Uh, Romanian historical painting uh, became necessary in the context of the 1848 uh, revolution. Uh, that's a very 
commonly known uh, historical event happened in Hungary, it happened in Romania, I think, I think it had some Bulgarian, yeah, Czech, I mean, I think everyone here knows about the 1848 revolution. Okay, so uh, this proves the strong connections that are established between art and politics. Before 1848, uh, the vast uh, majority of artworks that were produced in Romania were many portraits of Romanian elite, the boyars, uh, some allegories and some still lives. We still have some uh, a very strong Byzantine tradition in, in Romanian art because religious art continued to be a very strong co component of Romanian art. But uh, during the 19th century, uh, there is this uh, shift towards uh, the Western conventions of representation. This is, I don't know, quite common when speaking about the Balkans or the Southeastern Europe. Uh, this shift can be understood in the specific context of Romanian nationalism. Uh, taking into consideration that the Romanian principalities were uh, seen as part of the Ottoman Empire, as many others have been seen, they had to outline their national identity with as many unique traits as they, chose, as they could find in order to set them apart from the Ottomans. The, uh, the Wallachian or Moldavian rulers, they chose to become uh, national heroic figures were from the Middle Ages and they were known uh, for their uh, battles against the uh, Ottoman rulers. Uh, this visual discourse is promoted by Romanian art artists such as Barbu Iscovescu, Constantin Leca, he was of Armenian descent, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Ion Megulic, Gheorghe Tatarescu, Constantin Daniel Rosenthal, who was of Jewish dis uh, descendants. Uh, Theodor Amman, another, another, arti another artist of Armenian descendants. Jedemira, and so on. So if you can see that there, uh, we have some artists that are uh, from various ethnic backgrounds that are considered to be Romanian and they produce Romanian historical paintings. They become a part of the historical narrative. We start our discussion with uh, Gheorghe Tatarosco. He is a member of uh, what is considered to be the first uh, generation of uh, Romanian modern artists. Uh, he has a somewhat allegorical approach to historical painting. We see here that Romania is a beautiful girl that is awakened from a deep slumber by an angel, with, which is sent by the Virgin Mary. Uh, on the ground there lies the Romanian national flag. Uh, we see religious symbols that appear side by side with Masonic ones. And uh, uh, it conveys the following message. We know that it is our divine right to be free from the Ottomans, but we will use science and reason to do it. Uh, Romania's glorious past is represented by a series of uh, ruins in the foreground. Uh, and uh, the present is represented to the landscape in the uh, background. Uh, with a very strong uh, emphasis on uh, the uh, agricultural type of economy. So we were we were a country with a very uh, very interesting and very long past. We had a future. We had a present. Uh, the second painting is also by Gheorghe Tatarescu. It's also an allegory. It also depicts Romania as a young woman, uh, a young woman that holds a flag uh, with an inscription that reads the 11th of February. 
she also has uh, the remnants of shackles on both her arms and feet. Uh, the, the inscription of the, on the flag uh, can be seen as a reference to a very uh, to a present event. On the 11th of February, uh, Alexander Yom Kuza, uh, the Rumanian, Romanian prince that united Wallachia and Moldova in 1829, was forced to abdicate. So uh, uh, you can see that the background is bleaker that in uh, compared to the to the previous allegory. Uh, so uh, the painter uh, tends to express his uh, his I don't know worries about the future because uh, having one ruler. Uh, Forcibly, forcibly removed, uh, left some questions about the future of that unification because that unification was made uh, against Ottoman wishes and directions. So uh, everyone wondered if uh, that unification would uh, stand the test of that present event. Uh, in Romanian art, uh, we have portraits before the 19th century. Uh, those portraits uh, were uh, mostly uh, votive paintings in churches with donors that uh, built those churches. But uh, with this modernization of Romanian art, we can see that uh, various political figures uh, begin to be depicted outside uh, this religious uh, context in the very mundane uh, circumstances. This uh, is the portrait of Nicolae Bolcescu. He was a big uh, figure in the 1848 revolution. He also wrote a book, a historical book, he was a historian, about Michael the Brave. Michael the Brave was a 16th century Romanian ruler. He united uh, Moldova, Wallachia, Transylvania. And uh, during the 19th century, he, because he becomes something of a, of a myth. Because uh, uh, Romanians have, uh, not only wished for, for independence from the Ottomans, but also wished to reunite all the historical provinces. That meant Dobroja, that meant Transylvania, Basarabia, and so on. So uh, when Michael the Brave united these three, three provinces, he didn't do it of, uh, out of a uh, I don't know shared national identity or common conscience. It, it was a very practical decision. He was uh, he was uh, surrounded by three major empires. Uh, that uh, he in a very uh, in various uh, stages uh, upset. Uh, I mean, he argued with uh, he argued with the uh, Austrians. He argued with argued with the Russians. He argued with the Ottomans. So uh, the next step was something do something bold or go home. So he does he did something bold. He united three different principalities and uh, well. He dreamed of, uh, of uh, establishing his own dynasty because uh, he minted a coin with uh, his son as his heir. So <laughs> he he dreamed he dreamed big in the sixteenth in the sixteenth century. He dreamed big. Um, my next uh, Romanian artist that I can. And then to analyze this, Teodor Aman. I don't know how many of you know about him. He is one of, I, it's an understatement, it's not one. He's the only Romanian painter when you tend to discuss historical paintings in Romania. He uh, considered historical painting as the major subject of painting. There, were, there wasn't any sorry, uh, anything more important than historical pain. Even decorated the lobby of his house with historical scenes. This is one of them. 
It depicts uh, one of the battles of Michael the Brave, the Battle of Calderon, when uh, he chased up the, uh, chased up the Turks. This painting is huge. It's one meter and half by two by four meters. Uh, when you uh, his house is now the museum of Teodraman. It's uh, one of the uh, museums uh, that under this uh, the name the Bucharest Municipality Museum. It's not one museum. We have many. We are have maybe eight or nine smaller museums in our care. So imagine entering his house and seeing uh, these two huge paintings uh, depicting Michael the Brave. Michael the Brave, uh, as I said before, he's, uh, uh, he's a somewhat mythical, heroical figure. You could see his portrait everywhere during the 19th century. Paintings, engravings, uh, book illustrations, you name it, they had it. So, uh, uh, these two paintings depicting Michael the Brave are a typical example of how the past is removed from the archives, from uh, uh, unimaginary archives, selected, de uh, decontextualized uh, in order to give meaning to the, past, uh, to the present. I'm very sorry. We can uh, observe the presence of uh, a modern vision of Romanian flag. Michael the Brave didn't have a flag that showed those three particular colors, blue, yellow, and red. Uh, speaking about past heroic figures, uh, there's another one that stands out. Uh, another ruler uh, of Wallachia, Vlad, Vlad the Impaler. We all know him as Vlad Dracula, the vampire. <laughs> but he wasn't a vampire, he was a sadist. I mean, actually, who invented He, uh, We tend to joke about uh, Vlad the Impaler as the one who invented acupuncture. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Theodor Amman uh, has uh, two major paintings uh, regarding this figure of Vlad the Impaler. One is about uh, an episode when uh, Vlad receives Ottoman ambassadors and when they refuse to take their turbans uh, out, uh, he has uh, he orders to nail their turbans to the head. So. Mm. Told you, he was a sadist. Uh, and the other one is uh, is an episode from his uh, anti-Ottoman campaign. Uh, he was on, uh, he was outnumbered by the Ottomans. R Romanian army didn't even exist at that time in a very organized manner. But the Ottoman uh, army was, of course, larger, more organized, so on. And uh, he was a very good strategist, so he chose to attack the Ottoman camp during the night. This become, became known in Romanian history as uh, the, uh, the wondrous and wonderful and illustrious battle with torches. Of course, Vlad, Vlad won because, you know, the Ottoman monks were sleeping and he, he just uh, uh, lay siege to a bunch of tents with soldiers sleeping, so of course he won. <laughs> I mean, really. Uh, although Teodraman focused on uh, depicting past events, he also chose to represent present events. Uh, during his life, uh, uh, mm, he participated in the battles of the Crimean War. As many other artists, he uh, just journeyed to the front, uh, watched some of the battles, and uh, returned to his studio 
using his the sketches he uh, he made two uh, large canvases. I mean, they are huge. They they are I don't know two meters by three something like that. One of them is what the Battle of Oltenica. Oltenica, you could see it in the Dolmabachche Palace in the corridor that leads to the harem. Yeah, it's quite interesting placement for a uh, for historical painting. And the other is the Battle of Alma. We are talking about events that happened in the, uh, during the artist's lifetime that uh, are depicted uh, using uh, the same structural compositions as, you, uh, as we have seen uh, uh, in the case of the Battle of Kolugare. So uh, you, we can see that the, this uh, imaginary border between past and present uh, is obliterated and these two time frames coexist, even merge, get, they get confused sometimes. So, uh, as we all know, without the shared uh, past or any knowledge about our own past, we seldom, we seldom know who we are and uh, where we are heading. In addition, uh, Romania during the 19th century were searching for its past to gain to gain insight into its future. Uh, I place the greater emphasis on Dodd Raman because he surrounded in himself with mementos from the past. Uh, you have seen these two panels that decorate his lobby. Well, above the entrance to his house, you have two glass oil painted panels with the portrait of uh, Negru Basara. He's considered, considered to be the founder of Goetia. He's uh, somewhat of a legendary figure. Uh, his historical uh, uh, presence is much debated and very controversial because uh, he's considered to be also uh, to have built the monastery of Kota Dargesh, uh, linking it to one of our popular ballads, the one uh, about Meshteru Manole and Anna, uh, who was a mason that, uh, in order to get his uh, church built, he um, in, uh, encased his own wife into the walls because uh, the place he chose for the, for the construction was then. So uh, God showed up in a vision and ordered him to encase his wife in the walls of his uh, church built upon sacrifice. Uh, of course, Murad uh, Vatarao had a wife, or at least Todoraman considered that he had a wife, so chose to paint her as well. So imagine, you enter his house, you have these above your head, you have uh, the scenes of, with Michael the, uh, the Brave, and uh, whenever he wrote his correspondence, he wrote it at this desk, which is carved by uh, Teodraman, with uh, the portraits uh, uh, representing various uh, famous Romanian rulers uh, and not only, because uh, uh, in the center of that desk, uh, uh, on the right and on the left, you have the portrait of Dejebal and Trajan. So, not only speaking about the uh, Middle Ages when he fought the Ottomans, we also spoke of the founding of the Romanian people following the Roman conquest. And speaking about the, the origins of the Romanian people, Gheorghe Tatarescu has a very interesting painting about a peasant uh, who travels to Rome and confronts the Roman senators about their policies remain, uh, regarding the province of Dacia. So, uh, this is everything I had to say. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Sama.
Um, your presentation actually provoked some parallels uh, between uh, East Romania and some of those. Bulgaria. Bulgaria as well. So, but there are many differences as well. So, you have the chance uh, to put questions uh, and uh, to make remarks. Uh, to make the webinar better. No. No, I'm no. the only employer. <laughs> I'm the star of this panel. <laughs> we have a lot of time for discussion. Yeah. And we can start with uh, I can ask, uh, is that, that um, the historical painting fair um, to be called by the personal memory and correct memory? But um, this is really uh, something that you can say about any kind of historical yes. painting. Yes. And um, and you even said the uh, Bulgarian and so on. Is there something uh, specific about Romanian history? Uh, no, because when you speak about Romanian modern art, uh, we uh, borrowed so much from the French and from the English art that uh, I think uh, uh, the cultural boundaries between, I don't know, uh, French historical painting, for example, and Romanian modern historical painting are not that clear because uh, we have the example of um, French historical painting. The, uh, as we all know, there were various French artists that depicted scenes from uh, Napoleon's uh, battles and Napoleon's life during his lifetime. Uh, and those are considered to be part of the grand historical painting narrative. Although they were produced during the subject's lifetime, <laughs> They are considered to be uh, historical paintings. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, some of them were very symbolic, not, not historical. Yes. Allegories, yes, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Romania was a major uh, history there. <laughs> uh, Teodor Aman, for example, after the unification from uh, 1859, the has of uh, allegory depicted uh, Wallachia and Moldova as two women holding hands like sisters. They are depicted uh, in the national peasant costume, holding hands and uh, bearing uh, uh, symbols representing uh, those two provinces. And they are considered... Yeah. Uh, and uh, they are considered as they can be viewed as historical painting, although they do not uh, depict a certain uh, event or a certain personality, because they entail a certain narrative about the past and the present combined together in one picture. I have such a question, Roxana. I have been in this uh, meeting house of the government, and uh, uh, what uh, was very attractive for me were not those um, uh, historical paintings uh, and what I mainly saw uh, were the uh, paintings uh, with uh, uh, modern, modern thoughts. Uh, so he depicted also some uh, modern images uh, yes, yes. and uh, modern costumes. Uh, and uh, socializing, dancing, uh, music making and listening and so on. So, on. so in a way, he was also one of the first uh, modern artists in, in Romania. And how, uh, in your opinion, these two roles uh, combine in such a productive way? He, he was productive uh, on both sides. Uh, yes, because uh, he was a very socially active man was rich, he organized various uh, balls and various mm -hmm. concerts right, uh, for the Romanian elite. He also played the cello, so mm -hmm. social life was very important. Uh, his uh, stepdaughter was a uh, soprano. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, you have pointed out uh, quite interestingly that 
he is the first to, or well, among the first uh, Romanian modern artists. And uh, given the, the the long and uh, standing Byzantine tradition in Romanian art, we were still in the early stages of modernization, westernization. Of course, uh, art had to, uh, I don't know, make up for the last lost time. So Romanian modern art begins to, uh, we call it the burning of uh, stages mm -hmm. in art, to achieve a certain uh, synchronization with uh, European Western art. So we have historical painting, we have allegories, we have still lifes, and towards the end of the century, we have uh, uh, genre painting, more genre painting, but also scenes depicting the daily love life of the Romanian peasant. This uh, this shift towards the the, the representation of uh, instances from the Romanian peasant's life can also be linked with, uh, with the ev evolution of the Romanian nationalist discourse. Because uh, after the unification uh, came the liberation from the Ottomans in 1878. And we were independent, we were unified, and so we needed to uh, find ourselves uh, new, new items to be called national. So we turn to, uh, to Romanian peasants. Uh, in the search for the, tra the traditional and the search for the, uh, the authentic. <laughs> of course, this is quite specific when talking about the Southeastern South Europe. Mm -hmm. This is not a phenomenon linked only to South or more specifically placed in, within Romanian uh, cultural framework. Mm -hmm. This is Something that happens when you when you have a country after not having one. I don't. <laughs> then, well, I think that we can. Uh, I can also link it with the search for the ethnographical Western society uh, being uh, already modern and standardized. Uh, sought to replace that uh, lost essence by turning its gaze to the Orient at first hand mm -hmm. or at other, I don't know, extra European territories. And after that, it sought to revive its uh, own traditional uh, past. Mm -hmm. But I don't think they can because it's all but lost. Mm -hmm. And I think this is why uh, so many foreigners uh, tend to visit the Balkans or the Southeastern Europe because they still have some some of that uh, traditional left, whether it was I don't know stylized, stylized by the communist regimes or uh, uh, maybe uh, molded to fit a um, certain pattern. Yeah. You mean nowadays? Nowadays, yeah. yeah. Nowadays? I think that. Because uh, I don't know about um, any other view, but uh, whenever foreigners tend to visit Romania, they are welcomed by uh, girls yes. wearing the uh, traditional uh, costumes. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and yes, so yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. We used to have a nuclear thing, the documentary. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we also that. <laughs> we also had the, those uh, those big orchestras and those uh, big TV shows that uh, emphasized uh, the importance and authentic authentic traditions of the peasants and so on. Yeah. Mm. You surely know this. Uh, uh, article very famous by Svetlana Alpers is art history with a question mark uh, and uh, three examples uh, are from the 17th century the chart, uh, but she, uh, it is from the 70s, 1977, uh, if I um, remember. 
and uh, she posed the, this question who is of history and what history could be the piece of art uh, and uh, you also you mentioned this question uh, what kind of history could we develop uh, um, starting from the very the very image uh, and the patterns uh, and the uh, the way colors and composition is uh, in use, etc., etc. And uh, if you make the this uh, this step uh, from the images uh, to the history, not vice versa, what kind of history could it be? Uh, which, is, uh, uh, which is which uh, is in a way common from the whole region after the withdrawing of the and uh, my, in, in, another, in uh, another direction, Michael Baxendal is, is doing similar uh, with the 15th century uh, Italian painting uh, and uh, he discovered a very interesting history. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because uh, it's usually the other way around. We tend to understand uh, art history uh, starting from history because uh, art history uh, puts a place to uh, text or yeah. you know that. Uh, but uh, regarding Romanian history, uh, if you uh, tend to look uh, at it from the perspective of uh, Romanian art, it's a very glorious one. We fought Ottomans, we won. We had uh, ancient origins, we had uh, specific uh, ethnical traditions that were kept untouched throughout the ages, and uh, it would be a false image of the history, it would be a false narrative of the history, because this is what historical painting is, that is uh, so much controversial, because it tends to present an idealized and very subjective image of history. You cannot reconstruct history starting from art but the other way around. And as I stated, uh, Peter Berg is quite right when he says that uh, images are merely conventions uh, of representation. They have no reality to them. Even in the case of uh, photography, uh, whenever a photographer uh, aims his camera at a subject or a landscape, he, always, always, he already has the image set in his mind and he translates it with a I don't know, visual representation. So, not anymore. We Thank you for attending. Married. Thank you, Roxana. And uh, this is the end of the uh, Yay! Okay. <laughs> Yay! <laughs>